Thank you for watching the Westwood Senior Guidance presentation. First thing first, especially if you're new to Westwood, I want to make sure you know who your counselor is. Next, I want to make sure you're familiar with the counseling website. So much of this website is designed to help our seniors. So when you get here, uh, you will see there's a college visit calendar. This is where we list all the colleges that are coming to visit Westwood. If you notice, if you click on a school, it'll give you the contact information for the college rep who is coming. If you go back to the home screen, you will see we have everything from ACC. If you're wanting to look where kids have gone in the past years, you can go here, applying to college. So most things we're gonna talk about and link here are all going to be included right here. Things about rec letters, submitting your applications, some other things that might just help you along the way. This is a great resource tool. If you're wanting SAT and ACT prep, if you're trying to get one more test in, all of that is here. Um, if you wanna refer back to last year's junior presentation where we covered a lot of stuff about research and the college application checklist, all gonna be here. Scholarships and financial aid, everything you're gonna need is gonna be listed here. And Ms. Browning will keep sending this stuff out to you all year long. If you're thinking about becoming a college athlete, the NCAA Eligibility Center, if you're looking at career assessments, if you're not sure what you're wanting to study next year still, good free options here for you. So lots and lots to pick from. Okay, so let's keep moving. So real quickly, just wanna make sure as you're sitting in class, you're thinking about what do you have to have to graduate high school? Because that's the first thing colleges need to know is that you're graduating. So these are the requirements. So I want you to think back over your four years and make sure everything on this list is accounted for. So four Englishes, four math, four science, four social studies, two years of the same language, a fine art, a PE, and then seven other classes, so seven electives. Okay, quickly, I wanna just real quickly touch on endorsements versus academy. At this point in the year, you might not really be thinking about it, but come the end of the year, when we're talking stoles for graduation, I feel like this is when people always were like, I had no clue. So I wanna make sure I spend the time and talk about it now. Academies, these are pathways, electives, that you took a three or a four year sequence. So four years of comp sci, four years of engineering, four years of dance, choir, music, theater, band, um, journalism, ROTC, all of those, if you completed three or four years, you're gonna earn a colored stole to wear to graduation. Are academies required to graduate? Absolutely not. It's purely just a little bit of bling. So if you click on here, it'll go through, you'll see all the different academies are listed here on the left, and it shows you which courses you needed and how many credits from that column um, you needed. So I just wanna make sure you see all that, that's here for you. Next are endorsements. Endorsements are required to graduate. You need one. Some students might think I'll get all five. No, colleges don't care. They're just making sure you graduate and you can't graduate without an endorsement. So here's the thing. Endorsements don't necessarily give you a colored school. And that's where people sometimes get upset in May. So I wanna make sure you know. If it is an academy, so one of the things up here, you will get a stole. So all the things that count as academy also count as an endorsement. But there are some endorsements that don't count as academies, and they're usually academic based. So for example, multidisciplinary. This is taking the four core classes all four year. You're in an endorsement, but that's not an academy because it's not a group of electives that are the same. STEM, if you take five science classes or if you take five math classes, you get a STEM endorsement. That's a graduation requirement but it's not an academy stole because again, five science classes is not an academy pathway. If you wanna double check all of them, you can look at this handout and it says, how can I earn an endorsement? So it shows you like STEM, comp, comp sci and engineering, four years of either of those will get you a colored stole because it's an academy, it's in the gray box, but the things below it, the five math and five science, these two don't give you a sash. Same thing, arts and humanities, band, choir, dance, orchestra, piano, and so on. These will give you a sash because they're an academy and an endorsement. Versus down here, 
if you take five social studies credits or four credits of the same language. This will give you an endorsement as well, but these will not give you sashes to wear. So I just want to make sure. And again, you could be wearing sashes for so many other things from National Honor Society to IB to different art honor society, Spanish. There are sashes and cords for so many other things. So if you don't have one for academies, don't worry. Okay, now let's focus on the actual college application process. So what does Westwood send? There's going to be a lot that's on you, but there are a few things that Westwood's going to handle, and I'm going to talk about them all in detail. We are going to take care of the, your transcript sending. You have to order it, and I'm going to show you how to do it, but you're the one. Once you order it, we step in and we send your, your transcript, which also includes your senior schedule and the school profile. We also will do your secondary school report for Common App. You just have to type in our email ad address on your Common App and your counselor will get notified and be able to do your secondary school report. Counselor rec letter. Again, on Common App, if it's required, you'll type in your counselor email. Once they receive that, then they can start working on it. So let's talk about these a little bit more in detail. So transcripts. You're going to click on the Westwood transcript ordering form. You can do it by clicking through this PowerPoint or if you go to the front of the Westwood website, there's a little box that says transcript order. You'll click there and order. Make sure you read through all the instruction. Big thing right up front. We will not send your transcript until they receive payment. So you got to make sure you don't forget to pay. The nice thing is within this system, it lets you pay with credit card. There is an option to pay with cash or check, but it lets you pay with your credit card right through here. So when you do this, you're going to put your email, your student email, your name, first name, middle name, last name, date of birth, your, your cell phone. So that's way if the registrars need to get a hold of you to ask any questions, they can. Student ID. For graduation year, you're going to go ahead and put 2024. And then you're going to check what do you want. And so if you're clicking transcript, you're then going to say, okay, where am I sending it? Here's the key thing. If you're choosing Common App, you can just write Common App. And how Common App works, if we send it to Common App, every college you apply on Common App can then access this transcript. So we charge you $3 to just send it once. So when you're down here, if you're going to use Apply Texas, you're going to have to click this one. Apply Texas, we actually have to mail your transcript to every single school. So it would be $3 for every place we send it. Versus if you put Common App, or if you're using coalition for anything, you would um, click this one and it's only $3 per co Common App and $3 for coalition. And you might just need one and you would just write, just send a Common App. It's $3 fee and then you're done. So super simple. If you need it sent to multiple places, like maybe this one was Common App, but you're applying to a school like University of Alabama, which is their own application system, you would do this and then you would write, um, University of Alabama right here. When you're done listing all your schools, it lets you pick uh, five at a time. You can either do cash or check. But remember, if you do those options, they will not process these until it's done. Or you click online, you click here, you pay, and then you click understand and submit. This way they get your money and the submit instantly and can start working on your transcript request. Other things on here you'll see, percentile certificates. Sometimes you might see a college will say, if you can prove to us you're in one of these percents, we might automatically give you the scholarship. Well, then you can request it. Again, you order it through the transcript request form. Um, the next big thing here is if a transcript deadline is close to a school holiday, Remember, Westwood holidays are probably pretty similar to college uh, holidays. Usually college holidays are longer than the high school. You will need to have your transcript sent, filled out on the form two weeks before the deadline. So a lot of colleges in Texas have a December 1st. The week before December 1st is Thanksgiving. You need to have it sent probably the first week of November to ensure the college gets it in time. So things like that to think about. Some colleges also have a January 1st deadline. January 1st is New Year's, and the schools have all been shut for weeks. So you need to send that probably the 1st of December. So just things to remember. Plan ahead. Letters of rec. 
So you're not going to need this for Supply Texas, but you will for Common App. So when you're doing this, you're going to go onto Common App under the My College section, and you'll type in your counselor's email address, and it's probably going to ask you for teachers, one to two. It usually tells you if they want them to be core, coaches. I usually say pick two different people. So maybe like if you're going to go for pre-med, maybe a bio, biochem degree, get maybe a science teacher. And then if you're in a club or a sport, have one of those people, right, as well, because a teacher and a club or a club sponsor or coach is going to write two very different things. And that's what rec letters should be about, is adding extra things to your application that they don't already know. So if you ask two science teachers, they're probably going to say similar things, that you're a hard worker, you help others, you maybe come in for tutoring versus a club sponsor or a coach is going to write probably more how you work in teams and things like that. So you want your letters to be both adding something new. Okay, what else will you need to send? You're going to have to send your test scores. You're going to actually have to fill out the application, whether that's Common App, Apply Texas. You're probably going to have to write an essay or more than one. You're going to have to pay the application fee, or you can use a fee waiver to pay. If you qualify for free or reduced lunch, you can have a fee waiver to pay for your college applications. All you have to do is go see Ms. Browning in the front office, and she'll help you with it. Your resume. Probably going to need to upload that for all your colleges. Some colleges will say it's optional. If something is optional in college apps, you need to do it. They're probably weeding people out for the people who didn't care enough to add the extra. So anything that's optional, you need to do. Portfolio. If you're applying for a degree like music, architecture, graphic design, art, they're probably going to ask you to submit a portfolio. Here's the thing, especially with portfolios. Every college might ask for it in a different format. You need to submit it exactly how the college wants. So triple check exactly how a college wants. You know, if two colleges are wanting it differently, don't just submit it to both and say, I hope it works. Uh-uh. Most of the time, if it doesn't meet their specifications, they're probably going to make you an automatic no. So pay attention. Last thing is keep a copy of everything you send, essays, short answers, because there's a good chance when it gets to scholarship applications, which hit more in the spring, you can probably use a lot of what you've already written. This is the one time it's okay to plagiarize yourself when it comes to short answers and essays for college apps and scholarships. Okay, for test scores, Westwood cannot send your test scores for you. You have to send them officially. So if it's your SAT score you're wanting to send, you're going to go to the College Board website and send your scores. If it's ACT, you're going to go to act.org and send your test scores there. It takes usually two weeks for College Board or ACT to send your test scores. So you cannot do it the night before your application is due. It's too late. There's no point. So plan ahead. I would recommend right now, even if you haven't even started applying, but you know where you're going to apply to, send your transcripts, send your test scores now. The colleges will hold on to all that information until your application comes through. They don't throw it away. So go ahead and send it now. Get it checked off your application checklist. It'll make your life so much easier. Okay, if you're going to apply to only Texas public schools, I would recommend using the www.goapplytexas.org. Pretty much every Texas public and private school are on here. We only recommend doing this for public schools. I would shy away from the private schools on goapplytexas.org. If you are applying to other schools besides just Texas state schools, I would use Common App. Because on Common App, you will find all private schools and all the Texas public schools. Just use Common App if that's if you're going to apply to lots of places. Because then you're all in one application system. It will make it easier for you. If you're just applying to Texas public schools, I would recommend Apply Texas. It's a little more straightforward. Common App. It's literally www.commonapp.org. You'll make your account. It has you pick all your colleges, and then for each college, you have to fill out the different applications. You'll pay. They'll have some supplemental questions. Make sure you check that My College page when you're on there, and that's where you're going to be able to add your counselor, your teacher emails. Um, the main thing you need to make sure when you get to that section is going to say, do you, do you waive your rights? And you need to check yes. 
If you don't check yes, teachers and counselors do not by law have to write your rec letters. All that means is you can't see the letters that are being written. Here's the thing. You shouldn't be asking people to write rec letters that you don't trust. You're picking people who you have a great relationship with. So you shouldn't be worried about what they're writing. So just click yes. Because again, if you also say no, it flags a lot of colleges kind of like, Ugh, because they're afraid you're trying to hide something. So just click yes and you should be fine. So some questions you might get on a Common App or Apply Texas and you'll maybe get stuck. I don't know how to answer these. These are your answers. These are the commonly asked questions we get every year. So on Apply Texas, it says, what graduation plan are you? There's like 10 to choose from. You are foundation program, distinguished level of achievement. When it asks on both application systems, how many college credits? This is ACC and on-ramps only. AP and IB do not count. Eventually, when you go to college, you're going to turn in your AP or your IB scores, and they'll award you credit from that university. So right now, you only get to put ACC and on-ramps. The general rule of thumb is three hours per class. So if you took U.S. history and government, that's six hours. If you took U.S. History, Government, and on-ramps pre-cal, that's nine hours. So three hours times the amount of classes you've taken from ACC and on-ramps. For Apply Texas, you're going to want to upload additional documents like your resume, your visa information, extra rec letters, etc. All that stuff needs to get uploaded into your application. Here's the thing. In Apply Texas, you're not going to see a spot for that. So what happens is if you use Apply Texas, once you pay your money, your application gets sent to colleges. Usually within a week, a college will email you saying, here's your portal. So maybe you applied to UT Dallas. UT Dallas will email you saying, we received your application from Apply Texas. Here is your portal to log in and check your application status. It will let you then upload additional documents. Example, those extra rec letters, resumes, visa information, It'll let you upload it straight into their portal for their admissions counselors to review. GPA, you're gonna be asked this, which GPA scale and is it weighted or unweighted? You are gonna say a 5.0 GPA scale and it's weighted. For rank questions, if you're not in the top 10%, you will mark we are a non-ranking high school. Okay, there are four types of admissions and I'm gonna just briefly touch base on them just so you know what, that, what it looks like. So first, let's just start with what application season looks like. So college applications are now open. Deadlines are going to be set between probably mid-October all the way till February, March, depending on the school. All these colleges, most of them who have all the fall deadlines, you're going to find out January, February if you were accepted. Then you have till May 1st to decide where you want to go. On May 1st, this is the day we sign the college banner outside in the atrium. This is college decision day. All colleges will keep your seat until May 1st. Come May 1st, that you need to make sure you've either said I'm going or I'm not going. Because that's when if they get a lot of not goings, they might accept kids who are on the wait list at that point. So that's kind of your timeline. So with that being said, regular decision means, let's say a college, so for example, UT Austin. They say you must apply by December 1st. Okay, well, they're going to let everybody know in February if you were accepted or not. That's just regular decision. Apply by this date. We'll let you know later if you were in. Rolling admission. So for example, a school like Texas State University. You can go ahead and apply um, now. So let's say you apply by September 1st. Usually within two weeks, you'll find out if you were accepted or not. I always say apply to a couple schools at rolling admission so you can maybe get a backup school. So maybe if all your dream or reach schools you don't get into, you know you already have a guaranteed yes in your pocket. So that's rolling admission. You don't have to wait till a, a day in February to find out. You'll find out a few weeks after you apply. Early action and early decision. These are going to be with your common app schools that are not Texas public schools. So for example, we'll use Rice. That's a Texas private school. So early action. If you click early action for Rice, it's gonna say you have to apply by an earlier date. So their regular decision might be December 1st, but early action, let's say it's October 1st. If you apply by October 1st for early action, 
you're going to receive an answer probably right around the winter break. So you'll find out earlier if you got in or not. And I love the early action because there's a chance if they're like, we're not sure, they'll push you back to regular decision and review your application twice. Also, there's usually a little bit higher acceptance rate with early action than regular. They like seeing students apply early, get all their stuff in. They try to reward y'all for that. You can do as many schools as you want for early action. Again, they're going to keep your admission seat if you get in all the way till May 1st. I love early action. If there's an option for it, I always recommend you do it. Versus early decision. Early decision is always where I'm kind of like, wah, wah. I don't recommend it. Early decision, you get to pick one school and one school only. I always say only do early decision if you have a dream school. Like maybe you've been wearing a rice onesie since you were born. Your parents are alumni and they say if you get in there, they will sell the home to afford for y'all to go. Like early decision should be that dire. Early decision, you'll find out early if you get in. There's even a higher acceptance rate from early decision than early action. But here's the big catch. If you find out, let's say at the beginning of December, you got in to your early decision school, at that point, every other school you apply to, you have to contact them and resend your application and you'll never know if you got in or not because you are in a binding contract that you must go to your early decision school. It's that big of a deal. And you might be thinking, oh, you know what? No, I can get my get out of that. Not a big deal. Nope. On Common App, if you do early decision and you click it, you have to say you understand what you're signing, that this is a binding contract. It then sends something to your parents that they have to fill out saying, we understand this is a binding contract. My child will go there if we get in. They sign it. Then it sends an email to your school counselor who says, yes, we have told them what early decision means and they know they are stuck in a contract with y'all if they're accepted. So you can't lie yourself out of this. If you pick early decision and get accepted, that is where you're going to college. It is a big deal. So stay away from early decision unless you have this dream, dream, dream school. Okay. In the state of Texas, I know this is not new to y'all, but I just want to make sure you've heard it. If you graduate within the top 10%, you're automatically accepted to all the Texas public schools as long as you apply by their deadlines. UT Austin, it's the top 6%. They're the one exception. All the other public schools are 10%. Essays and resumes. This is a chance where colleges find out about you. This is where they find out something that your school record doesn't say. You want to be as Take your time and put as much thought in it. Don't write what you think they want to hear. Write what you honestly comes to you to say. Don't try to use all the big vocabulary words that then they get lost in what your meaning is. This is not the time to be searching for synonyms. Write from the heart. Make sure it's easy to read and follow. Have lots of people proof check it for you for spelling grammar. I once had the USC, University of Southern California rep said they had so many people apply that if they see one spelling or grammar mistake, it's an automatic no. And that's how they weed out their applications to a more manageable number. So you've got to take this seriously. Um, resumes. Again, if you need a template, there's one on the Westwood website you can get from your counselor. You need to talk about everything you've done since ninth grade on. Again, you'll be like, but I can type in a lot of my resume stuff on the application. And again, in Apply Texas, it lets you put all your clubs and activities, but there's a text limit. So if you want to say your band, you're probably only going to be able to say band member, saxophone player, and that's it. Versus in your resume, you can write a paragraph about how your section leader, that maybe you're on the loading crew, you put in this many hours before school, summers, going to football games, comp you can talk about it all versus just saying you're a saxophone player in a band. Because so many kids from other colleges just do that and they never submit the resume. The resume is that extra bit that sells them on that you're actually a little bit more special and you're a little bit more determined when applying. So definitely submit your resumes. Finding the best colleges for you. This is a really great tool if you're like, I know maybe in Texas where I want to apply, but maybe you're wanting to look outside of Texas. This bigfuture.collegeboard.org is a free website. 
it lets you type in the major you're looking for. It lets you put in a lot of these other points, and then it'll search and give you schools that will meet all your qualifications. So, you know, again, we live in Texas. We know Texas schools, but you might not all, know all the schools in the Northeast, the Southwest, up in the Northwest. So it's a good tool to use. When people say, how many colleges should I apply for? I think four or more is an acceptable answer. Make sure you pick one school. You know you meet the academic qualifications so you know you'll have a backup school no matter what. I'm all about you applying to dream and reach schools to see because, again, worst they're going to say is no. But do you need to apply to 20 reach schools? I don't know if that's the best use of your time and money. Um, a lot of times I'll have kids say, well, I don't actually want to go there. I just wanted to know if I could get in. Instead of spending that money and time, you could be working on scholarships or other things that are more important than maybe just filling out another application. So that's what I would stress. Um, I've already showed you on the college website, on the Westwood Counseling website, where you can look where the colleges are coming here. There are virtual tours on all college websites now. So if you're not able to travel to some of the out-of-state schools, you can get on and do a great virtual tour to make sure you're learning about these schools to see if it would be a good fit. You can also call and talk to admission offices to ask questions and find out a little bit more about the schools. They are happy to help. If you do get the privilege of going in person, remember you can get a form from your Alpha office to take with you. You get two excused days that don't count against you as long as you take the form with you and turn it in. But if you go to campuses, these are th places you should consider going to look at because again, you're trying to find your home for the next four years and that's more than just the classroom. So look at all the other things they have to offer. Um, again, also visiting dorms, you know, see, see the different options um, when visiting. I'm sure most of the dorms will have tours you can go on to see what the living section would be like. Some of them will have learning communities where they group all students in a certain major. Or if you're an outdoorsy kid, there could be an outdoorsy like floor where they plan activities for you. Or if you're a big Harry Potter fan, there could be a Harry Potter learning community where they do Harry Potter events all year long. So there are things to look at that a lot of colleges have. Um, paying for college. So one thing I want to stress is it is now a state law that you fill out the FAFSA or the TASFA to graduate high school. It is literally a graduation requirement. Just like taking four years of English, you have to fill out a financial aid application. FAFSA is for U.S. citizens. Some approved non-U.S. citizens, if you click on the link, it'll tell you if you're not a citizen, if, you're, if you can't apply for the FAFSA. If you're not one of these, you would then apply for the TASFA. The TASFA is Texas's um, version of financial aid that can only be used at Texas schools. Um, so that can be a lifesaver for families as well. You only have to be a Texas resident, not a US citizen to use the TASFA. Um, they, it usually opens up October 1st. However, the federal government has said now it's gonna open the beginning of December. So once we find out the exact date, Ms. Browning is going to email out to parents and students alike saying it is opening on this date. Here is what you need to do. January 15th is priority deadline. So if it's going to open up in December and you should be done by January 15th, that doesn't give you very much time. What we recommend is that you do it over winter break. Cannot stress that enough. And again, Ms. Browning will send you more than enough information to explain that. This is what the FAFSA looks like. You're literally creating a new FAFSA. You click, it takes about 30 minutes to work yourself through it. Also, on the where I showed you when you were on the Westwood Counseling website, there's a full scholarship section. We will be sending you scholarships throughout the year, again, more in the spring than the fall, and that's just when local businesses have that on their agenda to do. Um, Area scholarships, local ones, some are only going to be for Westwood students, some will be for kids in Round Rock ISD, some will be in Austin, some will be Texas. When you're applying against less people, the odds of winning are always better. So I always say start with the smaller population one. So again, if only Westwood kids could win, definitely apply. And when Ms. Browning emails you these updates, she will highlight in yellow the ones you should start with, and she'll organize them by the date they're due. So it's going to be laid out very easily for you. There's also big search engines you could use. And again, all of these are listed on the Westwood Scholarship website. 
but you can also just Google. I mean, that's such a great tool. These are some ideas of how you could search for on Google, um, the picture, um, to maybe find very specific ones to things that are unique to you or your family. Just some other just basic general reminders is make sure you're on time for your upcoming senior one-on-one -on -one conference with your counselor. Um, don't procrastinate with college apps because deadlines, they're not flexible. You have to apply by that date and they have to have all your documents by that date or it's a no. They don't make exceptions. Stay organized. Last year in the junior conference, you got your college application checklist. Use it. Use a spreadsheet. Stay on top of it. Stay in contact with your teachers. Monitor hack. Your grades matter this year. A lot of colleges, especially Common App, they're going to ask to see your transcript in January because they want to know how you did your fall semester of senior year. Make sure you are checking your student email account multiple times each day so you can make sure you're not missing any things about scholarships and other deadlines. Some colleges and a lot of scholarships are trying to find you all on social media to make sure you really match their brand. So act appropriately. If you wouldn't want like a grandparent to see it, then it should not be on there. Check the counseling website. Use all those different things to help you. There's so many resources on that counseling website if you will just spend the time going there. So again, I hope this helped kind of get you through the applications. Be in contact with your counselor. Go to your one-on-one -on -one conference. This is a time where you can ask all the questions you have and get them answered. Thanks for watching.